This right here is the Zenith Defy Skyline. And to be honest, I might be getting one. <laughs> This is it guys, this is the last video for a couple of weeks. I'm off to Madeira, I'll be featuring it all on my personal channel. But to be honest, I've been thinking about my watch collection a lot. And I know it's only February, but I've been thinking about new watches for my collection. It's just how it goes when you're in the industry. And the Zenith Skyline's come out, it's dropped. It's one of the new watches that they've released and wow, have they got it right. So in this video, we will be going over the Zenith Defy Skyline and going over all these specs and why this watch is right for me. My name is Harrison, welcome back to Time on the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter and the first feature that we are going to talk about is the case diameter. This comes in at 41 millimeters and let's talk about that for a second and let's talk about why it's right for me. My wrists come in at 6.5 inches, so they're that little bit slimmer and I tend to tap out at around 42 to 43 millimeters. So this size is just it's just perfect for me the thickness of this model comes in at we've got our toolkit out and it comes in at 12 millimeters maybe slightly over 12 millimeters according to the calipers but the reason that this is right for me is that i having slightly similar wrists and having a outdoorsy kind of lifestyle i prefer watches that sit a little bit closer to the wrist to me they're more durable because they aren't raised they aren't as likely to be hit off rocks or hit off the table or things in passing then we get to the lug to lug the lug to lug comes in at 45 millimeters so it is more compact and we've done this in another video and we've i've explained the 70s design but it does keep with that 70s design i prefer more compact watches as they look that little bit smaller on the wrist they're that little bit more subtle and again that little bit more durable because they're they're less likely to get scratched and nicked. Let's talk about the case and the design. It obviously is inspired from the 70s Genta design. We've seen this on the AP Royal Oak. We've seen this on the Vacheron Constantin overseas. We've seen this on the Patek Philippe Nautilus, the Tissot PRX, the list goes on. I am a huge fan of this design, but this seems more personal to me. And I love the way it has that octagonal case. The case switches between brushed and polished steel. Now, in my eyes, having polished steel on this watch makes it that little bit more dressy. But when you're spending 7,100 pounds in a watch, you want something for special occasions. And to me, it makes that watch special. It makes it reflect the light. It makes it that little bit more eye-catching. I'm a huge, huge fan. This model that I have at the moment obviously has the rubber strap. The reason that I'm a fan of rubber strap, and you guys will have seen this in my Amiga Seamaster 300 meters or my Hamilton khaki field that I have the NATO on is that I feel like they're more durable and in my walk of life when I'm going up Monroe's or in Iceland you might have seen it in my personal channel I'll link it up here I do need that something that little bit more durable and this makes it that little bit more durable having said that if you want to you can change it to the bracelet because it has an interchangeable strap system and this is the easiest system I've ever used there's no fidgeting with a little pin buckle that's gonna spring out across the floor. It's just a little button that you push. I'll show you at the moment. So all you need to do is push this little button here and twist it up and it comes off like so. Genuinely the easiest one I've ever used. And then you can put this back in by just pressing it against that little loop. Bang. And you can obviously change it with the rubber or the stainless steel. Let's talk a little bit more about why I've picked the black rubber strap instead of any of the other colors. So you actually get a blue that we have here and also a green. The green's actually a really nice green, but I would still go for the black. And let me explain why. Black doesn't tend to pick up dirt as easily. It's almost like if you were to get a white car, you would see all of the dirt on it. Whereas if you were to get a black or maybe a silver, it wouldn't show dirt as easily. The last point on the rubber strap is it has a buckle release just there. And then it also has a pin so you can adjust it exactly to your wrist. I actually think these are a little bit easier to put on personally than um, other rubber straps that I've had. So I'm a big fan. Let's move on to the bracelet. Though. I have picked the bracelet with the blue face and this is where the dilemma begins for me. I'm not sure if I prefer the white dial with the rubber or the blue with the bracelet. But anyway, we'll talk about the bracelet before we get into that. So the bracelet almost tapers down and it seems to shine the light really, really well. I've said this in other reviews with that 70s kind of look. 
the light almost seems to hop down a notch each time when you move this. You'll see this in the macro shots. It also has a deployment clasp at the end, which is really, really easy and it's pretty safe. I mean, it sticks quite nicely. Sometimes deployment clasps can be that little bit too loose and you kind of feel a bit nervous about the watch, but this is it. Before we get into the dial and the movement of these watches, let me talk about firstly, why I have a dilemma between the two of these and why I'm not really sure which one I'd pick. And then also why I want one in my collection. So firstly, let's talk about this dilemma. When you have the blue, I think it suits being on the stainless steel strap or bracelet. Whereas when you have the white, I think it suits both. Now, to most, you would probably side with the white then because it would suit either or. You could switch it in and out. But I don't have a blue dial in my collection. I have an Amiga Seamaster 300 meters, which has the white dial. So this might be that little bit too similar to my Amiga Seamaster 300 meters. Then we get to the fact that I've always wanted a 70s designed watch in my collection. And this fits the bill without being out of reach. I'm just not sure which one I'd pick. This is where I'm asking for your help. Would you go with the blue or would you go with the white, metallic kind of white? Let me know in the comments. And also I'll put a poll up on our brand new personal Instagram page, Chisholm Hunter Watches. So make sure you vote there as well. For those of you that know me, you know that I love depth on dials. It's one of those things that I'm very attracted to. And also I love symmetry, being a photographer and videographer. So this dial is beautiful. I don't know how else to say it, and that's why I'm so attracted to this watch. The date window is at three o'clock, and the one-tenth of a second marker is at nine o'clock. Those two balance each other out. Normally, I'm a fan of the date window at six o'clock, but because it has that um, one-tenth of a second marker, it balances each other out. The dial is fully etched with the Zenith star design, the four-pronged iconic Zenith star. That adds an extra layer of depth. The date window is lowered and so is the one-tenth of a second marker. The hour markers are highly polished, filled with super luminova and raised. So you almost have three or four levels of depth there. The Zenith marker is at the 12 o'clock mark and so is the star which looks beautiful and again is raised and very, very visible. It's very easy to read, but without further ado, let's take a look at the loom. As you can see, the loom is bright green. It kind of reminds me of a Vacheron Constantin overseas loom. Remember that this is just a sample piece, so this will be brighter when the real thing comes out. This loom is obviously very, very bright and powerful, and it's very useful to me when I'm doing videos of the watch vlog, where we're up at two in the morning doing the Zenith Defy Extreme. We've actually done that quite recently, so I'll link it up here for you. But anyways, let's get this on the scale. So remember that these are sample pieces, so really all that we're measuring here is the difference between the rubber and the bracelet. The rubber comes in at 128 grams, whereas the bracelet comes in at 161 grams. You know, I'm a big fan of stainless steel. I actually prefer stainless steel to titanium. Now, I know that titanium is that little bit more durable, but I quite like the feel of having something heavy on my wrist. It feels that little bit more quality to me. Remember that Chisholm Hunter are actually official authorized retailers for Zenith watches. If you want to see these Zenith watches a little bit closer, then check them out in the link below. We have gone over the strap, we've gone over the bracelet, we've gone over the design and the face, but let's get into the movement, which is the watch lover's dream. This is one of the key points that makes me want this watch and is making me consider it for my collection. I truly believe that Zenith movements are ahead of others in the industry. And I don't just say that lightheartedly. I genuinely mean that. The watch movement is visible through the open case back. I'm a huge fan of watches with open case back. In fact, the only watch that I have in my collection that doesn't have an open case back is the Tudor Black Bay that I have on at the moment. There's a reason for that. I'll get into it in another video. This movement has the iconic Zenith rotor. It's fully automatic. It has 228 components, beats at a frequency of 26,000 VPH and has 60 hours of power. As well as that, it has the very first one tenth of a second complication on the front. This movement is gorgeous. You know, it's funny. I feel like in the luxury watch industry, when I was working in the Chisholm Hunter store um, in Edinburgh, I was working there and people tend to gravitate firstly towards black or white or color. There's two types of people. They either want blue or green 
or any other color or they want black or white. I tend to go with black or white and I think, I think the reason is that firstly it goes with more but secondly it's more understated and more of an underdog. The blue dial is the dial that everyone goes for in the industry. It's the dial that explodes. Look at the Vacheron overseas, for an example. I prefer the white, and I think that's what, what draws me to the white, is it's just unusual. It's the underdog in the industry. Here's the thing. The 70s Genta design is iconic, and I call it iconic because that's what it is, and I love, I love this design. But to marry that design with Zenith's watchmaking and expertise, I feel like we've woken up a sleeping giant here. And then, to top it all off, you have that uniqueness of the white dial and the one-tenth of a second marker. I'm obsessed with this model. You know, at the current moment in time, I just unfortunately don't have the funds for this watch. I'm a young man, I'm 24, I just don't have that money at the moment, but I think that's why I love it so much. I love the chase. I know for a fact that when Bark and Jack brings out a video or Teddy Baltazar or Houdinki, I will love their videos and I'll watch every single minute of them. And it's that one watch that reignites the spark and keeps you hungry. And that's what this watch is. And that is all from me today. That is my final day in the office. I'm actually, I'm off to Madeira within Within 24 hours, I will be in Madeira. So if you want to join the Chisholm Hunter Watch community, make sure you subscribe here. And also keep on firing your DMs to the Chisholm Hunter Watches page. We've, we've actually had a ton, which is just insane and overwhelming. So genuinely, thank you so much. Hopefully when I come back, I'll have, I'll have a tan. I doubt it because I'm Scottish. Anyway, I'll see you soon.